Hi everybody, here I am in my studio and I'm excited to share another video demonstration with you today. We are going to be painting this beautiful scene from Walden Pond, one of my favorite, favorite places to visit in the entire world. And the first half of the video is all instruction and the second half of the video is set to music for your watching enjoyment. Let's get started. I am so excited to be painting this gorgeous um, photo reference from one of my most favorite locations on the planet. This is Walden Pond. This is UART 500 grit and this paper is about, it's actually about a little less than 12 by 15, um, but I just cut mine off the roll and so it's a little bit bigger than a standard size. You can see that I sketched in some really loose, just mapping the lines and where I want my elements to be on this page. I am putting in some shadows and the darker masses. Really, I'm just kind of looking at that dark tree mass. You can see that I'm making very linear lines and that's going to help me with the effects of pine trees. I'm also swiping in some of those deep shadows and where the trees are casting those shadows across this beautiful snow. I'm using a very light touch here. I am going to do an alcohol wash underpainting. You know I love my alcohol wash underpaintings to really just wash this in. But right now I'm really feeling my way around this reference. Sometimes it's important to just have fun with this process. Be pretty spontaneous. I like to look at my photo reference and just allow it almost to guide me. Sometimes I go off onto a more creative, interpretive color or changing up some of the composition. With this, with this painting though, we're gonna pretty much stick close to these colors as we can. I'm going to be using more local color, even though, yes, I'm starting with very dark blue for the trees. We're going to be applying more local, accurate color on top. I'm pushing in some of that new pastel with rubbing alcohol just gently with my fan brush. I'm going right back in using very linear marks, kind of scraping the pastel upwards, also in that almost perpendicular to the, to the trunk to create the, the look of the pine trees. Pine trees have, the, of course, yes, they have a lot of sky holes, but they have a lot of depth and space in them as well. In order for those not to look cartoonish on your paper, I love to put pine trees with, of course, trees that are also in the distance. And so I will cut out the pine trees in the front with harder marks and then blend a lot of them into more distant tree lines. As you can see here, there's the softer wash in the back and then carving out that tree again in the front. That will help you to just have a more realistic and very painterly effect for your pine trees. Okay, we're gonna start off with some dry pastel. I did wait until this was dry. If, if you are unsure if your alcohol is dry, you can just gently touch it with your hand and if the paper is cold, usually the, the alcohol is evaporating so it's, it's getting drier, but just wait until the paper feels just room temperature and then you can really start applying your soft pastels. I'm just using very slight tapping and very linear marks, almost straight across, to help me form the main branches of my pine trees. I like to, whenever I'm, whenever I'm starting the soft pastel layers, I really mirror the colors of my underpainting. Now I'm moving more towards dark green. I move dark to light, 
cool to warm. And so what is a little bit warmer than blue? Well, it's in this case, it's green. Um, and this is a very dark green. So these are greens that are similar in value. This is a Giro green. You can actually see, look how much drifts down across my paper. If you look really closely, there is, of course, there are deep shadows in the water, and then there are also more shallow areas. Where the sunlight is hitting, the, the water is much warmer and much brighter value. And so I'm manipulating the pastel and the colors to indicate that. Now I'm moving to another new pastel. This is kind of a dark, neutral, turquoise-ish color. And you can see in the reference photo how there is a gradual, there's a gradual change from the darkness over to the light, the brighter light. My painting, the general outline of the, the water is a little bit more rounded than is in the photo. This is actually something I have since changed a little bit. I did decide to go ahead and make that a little bit of a stronger angle instead of such a rounded line. I'm using a, a, an ultramarine here to swipe in, angling my pastel in the direction of the land. That's always very important. You make sure you follow the topography of your scene and that will help you tell the story even better. Beginning work on the distant tree line. You can see that it's a little higher here than it is in the photo. That's just because I wanted I wanted to change and I love to add drama. And so whenever you change the height, of course, to make things either smaller, bigger, um, it just helps with that dynamic that dynamic composition. I also just wanted to show a little bit more of the water between that distant shore and the closest shore. I used that same dark turquoise back there that I did in the water. Now I'm just gonna, just a few marks to reiterate that one main leaning tree. I want it to look like that tree because I want this to look like Walden Pond. I also have quite a bit of a mass over there on the left. And so I'm going to start trying to push some of those trees backwards. This is, this is where you use your artistic license. Because of course, in the photo, there's not that much value difference between those main pine trees in the front and the trees that are behind those pine trees. And so this is where you use a value and you can also use, use the hues that we know. In this case, I'm using blues, very neutral blue to really push that mass of trees backwards. So then I can bring those pine trees forwards and so it's not just all one main clump of trees. I also am going to tone the paper a little bit with this very light mint green. I love to use greens in skies, especially for winter scenes. It just adds a cool crisp effect. And I'm just gonna push that in right here with some pipe foam. I'm really pushing it in. You can see that I actually just swiped a little bit of that darker color into the sky. That's because my pipe foam wasn't quite clean. So if you want to avoid that, make sure you check your pipe foam. I'm not worried about it because there's so much tooth left, I'll be able to easily cover that little mistake. But I do want to make sure that that sky color is behind the trees. And so I'm being really careful. I don't want that halo effect that we can sometimes get.
I hope you enjoyed watching that painting come alive. I certainly love painting them for you. Thank you so much for being here and for watching this. If you like to help support this channel, keep these free videos coming, please consider visiting my Patreon page. The link is right here. I have several levels of support and I appreciate every single one of you. I can't wait to keep teaching you about the beauty of pastel. See you later.